So hello and welcome to this Bioprocess International Ask the Expert webcast. I'm your host, Leah Rosen, the online editor for Bioprocess International. Before we get started, just a couple of notes. This webcast is being recorded and will be made available for replay in the multimedia section of our website. We've muted the audio lines, but we welcome you to type in your questions for a speaker in the question answer window on your screen. After the presentation, we will begin the question answer portion and I will ask your speaker your questions. Your questions in the question answer window will only be visible to myself and our speaker. So thank you for joining us today. It is now my pleasure to introduce our speaker, Christine Mitchell from Wuxi Advanced Therapies. Hello everyone, thank you for attending this webinar. I'm a scientific fellow in the analytical development group. First, I'll give you a brief overview of the company and then tell you about the cell line identity methods that we have developed. Wuxi Advanced Therapies is a global company supporting a global pipeline with eight sites across three countries and over 1,000 employees to help accelerate pipelines to market. We specialize in viral vector manufacturing, cell therapy manufacturing, and plasma DNA manufacturing, all with integrated testing for greater predictability. Wuxi Advanced Therapies is a premier CPD MO that supports global contract testing, development, and manufacturing. We are a fully integrated manufacturing and testing organization with world-class AAV, LENT, CAR-T, TIL, MIL, plasmid, and technology platforms from discovery through commercialization. In this presentation, I will focus on the cell line identity test developed at our Philadelphia site. First, I will give you an overview of the targeted sequencing approach we use to develop the identity test, then present a study to demonstrate the robustness of the method. We've offered this test since 2015 using the ion torrent PGM sequencer shown at the left. While this instrument has been a workhorse for us, sample processing requires a complex manual workflow. Recently, we've automated the sample prep on the ion torrent Genexus integrated sequencer pictured on the right. I will describe how this has reduced human error and increased the quality of the assay. Why do we offer cell line identity testing? Because regulatory agencies expect characterization of cell banks used for the manufacture of biologics to confirm species identity. Like other companies in the biopharma industry, we should use the authenticate isoenzyme analysis up until 2015, when it was no longer available. At this time, Wuxi implemented short tandem repeat analysis, a technology used in forensics to establish human identity. The STR analysis method was applicable only for identification of human cell lines. To cover the gap in identity testing for non-human cell lines, we developed a targeted next generation sequencing method for animal cell lines used in the production of biologics. The next slide gives an overview of the targeted sequencing approach. Targeted next generation sequencing sequences only regions of interest. In contrast to whole genome sequencing, which creates a large amount of data that is time consuming to analyze, sequencing only targeted loci generates greater coverage of regions of interest and reduces the cost and time needed for data analysis. Targeted NGS uses PCR to amplify regions of interest. To develop our cell line identity method, for each cell line species, we identified at least 10 species-specific sequences within protein coding genes located on nuclear chromosomes and mitochondrial DNA. This approach provides a more comprehensive evaluation compared to sequencing a single target, such as the DNA barcode method that analyzes a single region in the cytochrome oxidase subunit 1 gene in mitochondrial DNA. For the Wuxi method, we designed PCR primers to amplify the species-specific target sequences that we identified. To confirm that the PCR amplicons are specific to the target species and do not cross-react to other species, we performed a BLAST analysis to compare the amplicons to public GenBank and RestSeq databases using the basic local alignment search tool available at the NIH.gov website. 
At the bottom right is an agarose gel showing example amplicons generated by amplifying DNA from Chinese hamster ovary cells using PCR primers designed to amplify chose specific target sequences. In addition to the species-specific sequences, we also identified sequences in six genes that are conserved across species and designed PCR primers to amplify these sequences. Amplification of the conserved sequences serves as a control to demonstrate that the method was performed correctly. Detection of the conserved control targets provides an assay validity criterion. For each cell line species, the control primers are combined with the species-specific primers to create a primer pool for multiplex PCR. The next slide shows a high-level view of the manual NGS workflow. The NGS procedure begins with DNA extraction of the test article cells. The DNA is then amplified by multiplex PCR using the primer pool and a high-fidelity polymerase. In a multi-step process, sequencing adapters are attached to the amplified DNA fragments to create a library. Then the library is sequenced on the PGM, which generates hundreds to thousands of sequences for each amplicon. The next step in the procedure is to analyze the amplicon sequences using a Wuxi bioinformatics pipeline. The analysis begins by aligning the sequences against the database that contains the species-specific and control sequences. The picture on the right shows alignment of amplicon sequences to one of the target sequences in the database. The red lines represent the forward DNA strands and the blue are the reverse strands. The pipeline generates a consensus sequence for each amplicon. If at least four of the six conserved control amplicons are detected, the assay is considered valid. The graph on the left shows example results and displays the number of sequences generated for the control amplicons. The graph is divided into columns along the x-axis to show each amplicon in the assay. Sequences generated for the amplicons are represented by the blue shading, with the number of sequences from 1 to 10,000 shown on the y-axis. In this example, all six controls were detected and the assay is considered valid. The next step in the bioinformatics is analysis of the species-specific sequences. Each consensus sequence is analyzed by BLAST against the GenBank and RefSeq databases to determine the best species match. If at least 80% of the species-specific consensus sequences match the test species, the identity of the test article cells is confirmed. The 80% criterion is based on International Cell Line Authentication Committee guidelines that recommends an 80% match to allow a small amount of variation that is often observed in cultured cell samples. As in the previous slide, the graph on the left displays the number of sequences generated for the amplicons represented by the blue shading, with the number of sequences from 1 to 10,000 shown on the y-axis. In this example, all of the species-specific amplicons generated sequences and the BLAST confirmed species identity. To show you an example of the cell line identity assay, the next few slides presents the CHO assay developed for identity of Chinese hamster ovary cell lines. For the CHO assay, we analyzed 15 sequences located within protein coding genes that are specific to the CHO species, Crocetalus cruceus. Using the 80% criterion, CHO species identity is confirmed if at least 12 of the 15 targets match to Crocetalus cruceus. The table on the right is an example of a BLAST result. Each of the 15 species-specific amplicons matches to Crocetalus greasis, confirming identity to CHO. We've conducted a thorough evaluation of the cell line identity method following ICH guidelines, which states that identity tests are intended to ensure the identity of an analyte in a sample. Identity tests should be evaluated for specificity. A test should be able to discriminate between related analytes, should give positive results for samples containing the analyte, and negative results for samples not containing the analyte. To 
To evaluate the Cho assay, we tested the six cell lines shown in the table, Cho K1 and Cho DG44, two Chinese hamster ovary cell lines, were evaluated to assess specificity within the target species. Deering hamster, BHK, and mouse, NIH3T3, were selected as two cell lines similar to the target species. Human and varus cells were evaluated as two cell lines not similar to the target species. The next slides present the results for each of the cell lines. The graphs on the left show sequences that were generated for the two CHO cell lines. As you can see, the six controls were detected, so the assay is valid. All 15 CHO-specific amplicons were generated, and the BLAST results match to Crusadolus grusius, confirming these cell lines are positive for CHO. Now looking at the graphs on the right, you can see that the six control sequences were detected for the mouse, BHK, Vero, and human cell lines indicating that the assay is valid for these samples. No CHO-specific amplicons were generated for the mouse, vero, and human cell lines. Three of the CHO-specific amplicons generated sequences from the BHK sample. However, the BLAST analysis revealed that the best match was to Mesocrusetus aratus, the Syrian hamster species, and not to Grisetulus crucius. All four of the non-CHO samples were determined to be negative for CHO. The study results confirm the specificity of the CHO assay and demonstrate the robustness of the method. In addition to the CHO cell line identity assay, we have developed similar 33741 assays for identity of BHK, Syrian hamster, mouse, mus musculus, SF9, fall armyworm, and Vero African green monkey cell lines. Since putting this method online six years ago, we have su successfully completed GMP testing of hundreds of cell lines. The test has been accepted by U.S. and European regulators for clinical and commercial biologic and advanced therapy products. While I've shown you that the cell identity test is a robust method, the manual procedure using the PGM involves a complex and time-consuming workflow. Recently, we have improved the method by automating the procedure on the Genexus integrated sequencer. This simplifies the workflow and reduces operator input. Over 350 hands-on steps have been reduced to only 26 steps performed by the operator. The integrated sequencer replaces the PGM plus five other accessory instruments, reducing the lab footprint, instrument maintenance, and service costs. What used to take five days to go from sample to sequencing results can now be accomplished in one day. Automating the sequencing workflow has reduced human error and interoperator variability. For example, variability in loading the sample into the sequencing chip has been reduced by 75%, and operator touch time reduced by 400%. Automation has increased the efficiency and overall quality of the cell line identity method. In summary, Wuxi Advanced Therapies Test 33741 is a robust species level identity assay for animal cell lines. The test employs a multi locus sequence analysis. At least 10 species specific sequences and protein coding genes are analyzed for identity. Each assay also analyzes sequences that are conserved across species to control for the methodology and provide assay validity. The test has been accepted by U.S. and European regulators. Automating the procedure has reduced operator touch time and human error. The cell line identity method is available for BHK, CHO, mouse, SF9, and zero cell lines. Thank you for your time. I can take any questions. Okay, great. So the first question is, does the cell line identity method have a cutoff or minimum number of sequences that need to be generated for each amplicon? Uh, yes, we require 30 sequences because that ensures the consensus sequence is accurate. The CHO samples you presented all had 15 out of 15 amplicons, but criterion is 12 to 15. How frequently does a sample not generate all 15 amplicons? Uh, in our experience, 
all of the species-specific amplicons are detected. Uh, unless a sample does not match the species of the test. For example, a client submitted a Mustani cell line by mistake for the mouse assay, which is for Mus musculus. In that case, the Mustani sample did not generate the minimum 80% musculus targets. Um, as an aside, we're, we are developing an identity assay for Mustani. Has any validity criterion changed since automating the workflow? Um, yes, some criterion have been eliminated, such as the slope and R-square value for the qPCR used to quantify the library, uh, because the qPCR has been uh, removed from the automated workflow. You are using ion torrent sequencers. Do you consider any other sequencing systems, such as Illumina? Um, at the time, we were considering what systems to purchase. So we went with the ion torrent because the longer, longer sequence lengths and the shorter run times compared with Illumina. But now Illumina instruments uh, can generate similar length sequences and have shorter run times. Thank you, Christine. You're welcome. And thank you to our audience for joining us. The recorded version of this webcast will be made available for replay in the multimedia section of our website. And as a registered attendee, you'll receive a follow-up email providing you with a direct link. We look forward to having you join us at future Bioprocess International Ask the Expert webcasts. Look for those announcements in your inbox. Goodbye.